The next question is from Andrei, who has a strong feeling that Putin and direct-line scriptwriters follow different paths and that their agendas were completely different. Absolutely. For how long will Putin be able to tackle nation's issues in manual mode? I saw a suggestion in Telegram channels that the president urgently needs Twitter for real-time interaction with people, for imposing his agenda and directing to pressing issues. Trump benefits greatly from using this instrument. Why doesn't Putin use it? Trump is protected by the ruling conceptual power, whose aim is to conquer Russia and turn Russia into raw material appendage. Putin implements an alternative governance concept. Putin won't be able to use Twitter as Trump for one simple reason. The governing body in Russia is anti-Russian. What is striking about the direct line? Before I start, I will have to say that I grade Putin's performance during this interaction with people as excellent. His performance was perfect, just perfect. But what needs to be understood here? Enemies of Russia who work towards Maidan tried to sabotage the effectiveness of Putin's governance of Russia as much as possible during the direct line. What is the direct line with the president? It is getting direct feedback from the governed object, bypassing governance bureaucracy without its data correction. Putin needs direct communication, otherwise the governance is not efficient. He initiated the direct communication when he had nothing to say. Now he can say, I have done this, I did this and that. What could he say in 2000, in 2001? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And the governance bureaucracy that runs Russia has formed as anti-Russian, all of it is pro-Western, absolutely all of it. And this governing bureaucracy had to be forced to work for Russia's interests. But this requires an understanding of the actual condition of the governed object. Can Putin obtain this actual condition of the object, Russia, through anti-Russian bureaucracy? No, he cannot. During the direct line, Putin told a story. That story demonstrates the moral basis of Putin and the moral basis of the governance body at the time when he came to power. A moving story and you can feel that Vladimir Putin cares about it, still cares. This story explains why Putin initiated direct contact with people. To hand over to him a petition, a woman dropped down on her knees into the mud, and Putin's assistant lost it. Alexander Voloshin was the head of president's administration then. He was a founder member of the so-called family clan. His people were everywhere. They didn't lose the petition, they just throw it away. They were not concerned with regular people's needs, but Putin was. He understood that living word wouldn't pass to him through all this quote-unquote elite who didn't care about people. Their main goal is to please their American master, to be a slave and to destroy Russia and Russian people. Putin initiated direct contact with people, having clear understanding that he would be spat at and thrown stones at, that he actually didn't have anything to say, that in order for the governance not to collapse, he had to somehow explain the actions of the governing body. Look, at this press conference, he, as always, had to neatly maneuver, trying to achieve multifaceted goal to outline the main point, be truthful, and at the same time not to let the governance to collapse, not to cause a backlash from the governing body so they won't start to panic and react as a frustrated person 
who feels sorry neither for himself nor for anybody else. And as a result, man-made technological disasters would start happening all over Russia. And Putin managed to achieve many goals. He was direct. Many people didn't understand when he spoke about salaries, but he said a lot there. Has anybody heard him? No, they got offended instead. Was it that challenging to understand that Putin explained the current governance status? What was the first task of the direct line moderators? The first task was not to give Putin the opportunity to talk to people. They work hard for it, all of them. Look at the unqualified and insolent behavior of the presenters who wasted time, played for time, diverted the conversation, tried to turn it into nothing. And those reports, which only purpose was to steal time, they tried to make a celebrity guest of Putin. Just sit there, we will praise you and dance ritual dances around you. What did Putin do? He began to read text messages, which were not censored, picking them out of the stream of messages on the screen. Well, he came there to do his work, to answer questions. So he was picking questions from the screen, and he did as much as he could. Let's look at the attitude of the ruling quote-unquote elite towards regular people. Has it changed? Not in the least. A question about teachers was one of the first. It is a great concern, a burning issue. The organizers who picked out this question addressed the problem from the point of view of governance. They chose an auxiliary question, not the key one, that should have been asked first. And choosing an auxiliary question before the key one, for sure, closes the topic. That is what they did. They closed the topic for discussion. For them, the problem upon which the security and sovereignty of the nation depends is not important. What did they prepare for the night? Did they let any teacher ask a question? No, they didn't. They chose the question from a liberalist who used the direct line to promote his shawarma. That is what crucially important for them. They specifically ask him, hold the line and wait. You will be given the opportunity to ask this question. They specifically picked out this, so he could advertise his stupid shawarma. This is what is essential for them. The direct line organizers don't care about people's grief at all. These two standpoints about teachers and about shawarma, this is an indicator of the morality of the organizers. They are not interested in people's concerns and aspirations. A shawarma promotion is a more important issue. Let the president be an advertiser of my shawarma. Remember the Tsaritsa from the fairy tale goldfish? She said, I wish the goldfish to serve me as an errand girl. This is what they showed. This is what they demonstrated. We wish Putin, an effective manager and governor, to be our errand boy. People's interests? Education? Who cares about it? And do these issues concern this shawarma shop owner, who received no education, but suddenly and inexplicably became successful in business? Even Sabanin, the mayor of Moscow, showed up at the opening of his place. It is absolutely clear that this shawarma shop owner didn't achieve that by his own work, that he is a made-up businessman with a primitive form of intelligence who is a walking showcase. Everyone should only be interested in things that bring pleasure. Silly you, if you don't support the state, 
If you lead a worthless life doing nothing, how are you going to obtain anything for your pleasure? Where are you going to get food to indulge yourself? In what comfortable flat are you going to luxury? Who must give you this flat? Who must provide it with utilities? It is an indicator. They don't want to listen to people. They don't want Putin to communicate with people. They work hard to disrupt this communication, so that Putin won't be able to talk to people. And Putin, despite all of this, by picking out questions, was raising the process of getting feedback from the governed object to the highest possible level. To what level could it be raised ideally? Look, what is the key issue of our society? People feel not only offended by the imposing of the pension reform, they understand this reform as a deliberate genocide of the population. What about our liberalists? Medvedev voiced their attitude, saying, there were no reasons for carrying out this reform. We marked you. Actually, we can now transfer to a four-day week. We just strive to deprive Russia of its future through imposing this pension reform. People are outraged. Consequently, the president's rating dropped. Maidan sentiments went up. Here you go. Direct line with the president plus such a hot topic and silence. There was no single question about the pension reform at the direct line, not a single one. Sergei Kurginyan raised this issue at the Solovyov's TV show. What was done? It was censored. And only Solovyov's comment was left. Quote, you see, there were no questions about the pension reform. That means people accepted it. End quote. What do we have as the bottom line? Social tension in the country soared and the number of people who are ready to start a Maidan to destroy the state increased. The destruction of the state is exactly what liberals want. That is what they need Maidan for. Liberalists understand perfectly well how important the direct line is for the president. And what some government officials did they gathered their subordinates. If anybody asks the president a question, that person will be fired. This was done by officials from the governing apparatus, private companies. During the live broadcast, the light was turned off in some regions. When the live broadcast had ended, the light was turned back on. If it wasn't such a big deal, there would be no such resistance. It simply wouldn't be the case. I repeat, the moderators of the direct line had two goals. First, not to allow Putin to get the normal reaction, get feedback from the governed object. And they tried very hard here. They were devouring time mercilessly. They transferred attention to shawarma, to God knows what only to prevent Putin from obtaining feedback. Putin had to maneuver around that, snatching the most relevant questions from the text messages. The second goal, for example, let's look at the broadcast Moscow Kremlin Putin on TV channel Russia One. On the surface, it looks like an information program, but in reality, they discredit the president and pump up tension in the society by creation of a cult of personality. The second goal of the direct line was to do just that. Praise the president. Look, here's your president. Here he is. Here is Putin. What for? In order for another wave of rejection to rise and the degree of a coup d'etat in the country to increase dramatically. That is, here's the direct question to the press secretary Peskov. In fact, are you a fool or an enemy of Russia? He has to answer with his deeds, not words. He has to answer with his deeds, and they will show what he is all about. Putin, 
Putin leads Russia, he works in the interest of Russian people. For the sake of this, he does the direct line. He gets a direct feedback from the government object. And Putin, by the way, told them directly, are you holding me for a fool? Do you think I don't understand what is going on? I understand that even through freshly painted grass, everything is clear as day. He made it clear to the organizers of this press conference, whatever you do there, no matter how you censor by removing unwanted questions that could have lead to the proceedings in essence, no matter how you try to praise me, I still see everything. Even if I could not read these text messages, I would see what the real situation in the governing object is. After one question about shawarma and the question on education, everything immediately became clear. Everything fell into place at once. Do they not understand? what they did with the question on education, for them it is crucial to deprive Russia of education. If there will be education in Russia, Russia will be a competitor to the United States, the American country quote-unquote elite, and they are all American lackeys. It is important for them to be slaves of the Americans, so that they would have an American master, whom they will serve loyally, right up to licking his ass, and they don't care about Russia. And Putin, I repeat, gave direct, honest answers. But to understand these answers, you need to know at least a little about the governance of complex social supersystems. How these processes are taking place? Every Putin's answer can be repeated with a certain emphasized intonation, and everything will become clear to a listener. He always speaks directly, always. So, uh, this is what we have. On top of that, there are quote-unquote conceptuals that unite with Putin's haters and try to overthrow him, ASAP. Here are all of them. All the oligarchs, all the American lackeys, who also want to overthrow Putin. And what will happen next? They will get rid of Putin, and what will come next? Holy 90s? Do people need that? But if we don't want to return to this holy 90s, they are holy for thieves who stole the property of all Soviet people. Although they stole it, the money can't buy them brains up until now. Let's recall Pikalova. Why did it happen? because the oligarchs don't care about all of this. And if Putin wouldn't have intervened, nothing would have changed. And Putin following Yeltsin's footsteps would have just ignored this, and the story of Pikalova would have just evaporated into thin air. Putin is accused of corruption and so on. But if Putin didn't want to draw attention to the situation, then nothing would have happened, no one would have noticed it. And why did he draw attention to it? Because Putin fights against all the negative processes in the governance of the country. He picks out all these moments when he has the opportunity, and they become known. Therefore, the clan cooperative groups that are subjected to these blows, all these American lackeys, make a fuss about it. Oh, the level of corruption is very high. And what, it wasn't high in the 1990s? You were okay with the 1990s. Now that you are outraged, that here, you know, they put corrupt officials to jail? In the 1990s you were yelling that they don't imprison corrupt officials. Now you are outraged that they are being imprisoned. Make up your mind. Or does anything go as long as it is against Putin and against Russia? This is a brief answer to the direct line question. You actually answered Vladimir's question. How useful was this format? It is always useful, because, I repeat, Putin said directly to everyone, everything is seen as clear as day, even through freshly painted grass. Everything. I will add to that about the level of organizers. You were talking… Yes, we should mention the map. You do that. 
and about their level of education. This, I think, is not a mistake now. We talked about this last year already. Exactly one year has passed. The map of Russia's time zones was constantly broadcasted behind Putin. And notice, this map never existed in the Russian Federation. The indicated configuration there was wrong and never occurred in Russia. Once TASS made this mistake, and that wrong map was chosen by the executive producers of the direct line. Was it a mistake, though? Yes, this is also a question. Maybe the map was composed because of the absolute ignorance? Because it is no use to talk about the professionalism of journalists. I have already said that you can become a journalist only choosing journalism as a second profession. But before that, you must obtain the first profession. They do not know what they are teaching. And in this situation, those journalists who led the direct line with Putin know nothing and they are capable of doing nothing. Nevertheless, no one paid attention to the fact that there is a mistake there, and this map is being used until now, just like last year. Because the general educational level of the executive producers of this direct line is exactly level zero. They see the map, but they do not understand it. They cannot compare it with the real life. They lack intelligence. Here, by the way, we can also say that they blatantly violate Article 5 of the federal law on the calculation of time, which specifically lists the time zones. Yes. This map completely contradicts with what is stated in this law. This, by the way, also raises the question about their legal responsibility. This is also their moral responsibility. They do not care about Russia. It is more important for them to advertise shawarma so that Putin would be their errand boy. And what about Russia? We will draw some rubbish and the crowd will eat it up. Well, how many times I can already indicate that? For those who do not understand what we are talking about, in particular, on this map the Tomsk region is assigned to the time zone, although by law the zone, Moscow time plus three hours. But it has been living for three years with a four-hour difference from Moscow. Both the Saratov region and the Volgograd region are referred to a Moscow time, although today, just like a year ago, it is a Moscow time plus one hour. You are just spoon-feeding them. Let them do some work and find out for themselves. It was done already. We have this map. Yes, I know. But I meant those who have prepared the press conference. Yes, of course. I don't know how they can organize something like that and be so incompetent. It's a level of I don't know who. The lowest of the low. This is no longer a mistake. Here simply no one pays any attention to this matter. They don't give a damn about it. 